says, I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your indifference. Praise the Lord. I correct and discipline everyone I love. Why is God disciplining you? Why is God disciplining us? Number one, because he loves us. Mungu anakupenda. And, I, and if you remove your, your mind from taking discipline as punishment, you will understand what I mean. So you discipline only those people you love. Buona sifiwe. And because God is our father, and I'm talking to you, most of you are parents. Every parent will want their child to be upright. Sindio? Sindio? When you want your child to be upright, what do you do? You discipline. Okay, what, what is this that you do in discipline? You correct. Before you reach correction, what do you start with? You start with teaching. We, we do not reach a point of correction before we start teaching. When that baby is growing, by four, five, actually immediately, we start training them. You will not keep on crying and you're carried every time. We will leave them to cry and they will keep quiet. They will, they are, we are training them. So by the time they are reaching an age of understanding discipline, in terms of either rebuke or correction or using the rod, you had already set a, a standard before. We start with teaching. As they're growing older, you teach them to use the toilet. Those are the first teachings. You teach them how to eat. Table manners. How to use a spoon. When you are full, you are, when you are full take your plate to the kitchen. When there is dirt dirty, dirty down there, clean. You start with teaching. So when the Lord is disciplining us, that is a form of discipline. Teaching is a form of discipline. So God wants you to stand upright. He wants, wherever you are walking, there is nobody questioning, is that a child of God? Is that a child of God? He gives us instruction. As you have received Christ, he gives you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit guides us. And even as we read in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 6, from chapter 4 into chapter 5 into chapter 6, the Lord is giving instruction. He's saying, do not steal, work with your hands, do not use careless words. Those are teachings. So by the time you're using a careless word and there is a punishment for that, that careless word, there was already a teaching before. And because the Lord does not want the world to teach us, he wants to teach us by himself. And that is also what we want as parents. You want to be the source of every, every good thing your child does. Sindio, mtoto akipita, it is the parent who takes the reward. When a child respects the elders, we, are, we do not say that uh, this child uh, has, has been taught by just anyone. We say the parents taught them well. So that is what God wants. So in the, in the part of discipline, an element of discipline that we must always learn to embrace, be ready to be taught by God. And the Bible has a lot of teaching on every matter of our lives about taking care of children, about building wealth, about building your marriage, building your family, praise the Lord, living with your neighbors and everything. Sawa, sawa. So the first reason why God teach, disciplines us is because he loves us very much. Praise the Lord. Number two, it confirms your legitimacy as a child of God. It confirms your legitimacy as a child of God. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 8. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 8. And this is what it says. If God does, doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and you are not really his children at all. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. That is in the Bible. Hebrews, why Brania? 12 verse 8. It says, if God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his children at all. 
verse 9, since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirit and live forever? Praise the Lord. You discipline your child. It gives you the first priority. It is your first priority. Even when you are living with other people's children, most of us do not do diligence in other people's children. Not even most. Actually, we don't do. Sindio, you assume they already have a particular teaching. You just want to make them conform to the standards that you have set in your house. Praise the Lord. If you're living with any other person, you're living with a relative, you're, you're living with your, your workers, you're living with friends, you just want them to conform to the standards that you have set in the house. But you're not changing what they have been taught before. Because they are not your children. They are not your concern. If they misbehave, it is their parents who will be asked. Your child was in so-and-so's place and they were misbehaving. You will not be asked for... for, for you know, for the indiscipline of another person's child. Sinu kweli? Sinu kweli? Sinu kweli? Tunaelewana? So, when God is disciplining you, it confirms you are his child. The same way you will not want any other person to discipline your child is the same way God does not want any other person to discipline you. He wants to be the source of your discipline. Praise the Lord. The same way, actually, even now, if I hear somebody has touched my children, the fire that will come into that place, they will not, I will not even remember I am a pastor. First, even if they are wrong, I am supposed to be the source of their discipline unless I have given you a right to discipline my child. Praise God. So God wants to be the source of your discipline. Because he is your father. And if God is not disciplining you, if you're misbehaving and God has not said something, confirm if you're still in that family. You could have already strayed. Confirm. Confirm. If God is not disciplining you and you, you believe strongly you are a Christian, you might not be a Christian. You might not be in that family. So he has left you so that your father can look for you and discipline you. Praise God. So don't cry when God disciplines you. And when I, I am just using discipline as one word that is carrying the many other words I've told you, that is carrying teaching, that is carrying rebuke, that is carrying direction, that is carrying punishment, and all that. Praise the Lord. Are we together? Number three, discipline gives you wisdom. Discipline gives you wisdom. Proverbs 29 verse 15. Proverbs 29 verse 15. When, when God is disciplining you, when he is teaching you, he gives you knowledge and he gives you wisdom. When to apply what? When to apply what kind of word in any situation? Praise the Lord. And that is wisdom. I hope you remember wisdom is doing the, the right thing at the right time, in the right place, in the right way. In the right way. In the right way. We are here in church. Wisdom dictates that you, you come in fully into worship. So if we are singing, you're supposed to be doing what? Singing. And singing in the right way. And dancing in the right way. Praise the Lord. So the discipline of the Lord, the teaching of the Lord, the rebuke of the Lord, if you fall today and God corrects you, we are sure that you will not fall again tomorrow. Because he will correct you, he will rebuke you, and give you a package for moving for the next time. Praise God. And that's why we say, most of the time, we keep on telling you, there are things that you used to do. There are things that were your trap before you received Christ. And initially, when you were are, you are a baby in the faith, but currently, as you, are mature, you have matured, those things do not shake you. Those temptation traps, as you were fiki, why? When you were corrected that time, that knowledge and that wisdom has enabled you to 
to move forward. If you are living a promiscuous life, you are living in adultery. Now you know that as you as you are working in your environment, you already you 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 can sense that where I am right now, if I am staying in this room with this guy, in the next 30 minutes, the environment will change. I need to get out of this place. If we continue with this conversation, what comes next is going to make me fall. I need to end this conversation right now. Praise God. Because the Lord has imparted his knowledge in you and has given you the wisdom. So you know what to apply when. And you know how to end the conversation. Bila kuleta kelel. Praise God. You are able to end that conversation. You are able to get out of that place without bringing a scandal, but with walking, you are walking out honorably. Praise God. So, the discipline of the Lord brings with it wisdom. And as he disciplines you, in those places that you lack, he has told us that if you lack wisdom, ask of me and I will give you generously. Praise God. Number four, the discipline of the Lord gives life and health. The discipline of the Lord gives life and health. Isaiah 38 verse 16. Isaiah 38 verse 16. When the Lord is preserving you, when the Lord is teaching you, he's protecting your life against death. The, the whole essence of discipline is to make sure that somebody enjoys their life and they enjoys their life very well. Vile kiswahili inasema, asiefunzwa na mamae, ufunzwa, Na ulimwengu. And the teaching of the ulimwengu, is it a teaching that brings life or it is a teaching that brings death? It is actually a teaching that brings death. If your child is a thief and you never told them that stealing is wrong and stealing, stealing is accompanied by consequences and discipline and he's got stealing in town. See, those people who will get him, they will spare his life. Before, you, before he even says, please forgive me, he's already burnt. He's already been imprisoned. And when they are gone to prison, most of their life is already gone. If he was to go to school, that is gone. If he was, you know, I was reading somewhere, somebody was accused falsely. And he stayed in prison for 37 years for a crime he never committed. Imagine. So by the time he's coming out of prison after 35 years, He's almost 57 years. Now at 57, what, what, what are you going to do if you didn't have a family, if you never went to school? Most probably some of those things you'll do what? You will leave them. You can decide. Uh, you will not have enjoyed any of your youth. You now decide, I not go to school. Let me just look for a job. Let me just look for someone to marry and spend the rest of my days. Or you can even decide to say, let me do let me live until the Lord does what? Takes me. Because other things that you will have done for those 37 years are gone. So when the Lord is teaching us, he wants to protect us from death. Not just physical death, but spiritual death also. Praise God. When he's saying, do not commit adultery, the first thing that dies is your spiritual life. Before HIV, before you contract HIV and you die, the very first encounter in adultery, already kills your spiritual life. You already died spiritually. And the rest will follow. So God's discipline is to enable us to have life and not death. And not just have life, have life fully. And walk in health. Praise the Lord. This health could be because of his word. This health will also come because if your soul prospers, you will also prosper in health and in other things. This health, if you're walking an upright life, the demons will not have an opportunity of getting into you to bring with them diseases and other things. Praise the Lord. So the discipline of the Lord gives us life and gives us health. And finally, the discipline of the Lord is for your good. It sums up everything. It is for your good. God is not disciplining you to benefit. When you're disciplining your child, you are putting it at the back of your mind. What if I am not there tomorrow? Will my child fit in the society? 
will my child please God? Will my child, you know, know how to live with other people? Praise God. That is the intent of your discipline. Every time you're disciplining your child, every time you're teaching your child, if it is a rod you're using, if it is rebuke, your main agenda is not for your benefit. Yes, you'll take the glory for having trained your child well. But your main purpose is to make this child fit for human life. Fit to live in this world. Fit to live with other people. Fit to work. Praise God. So, and that is the whole essence that God has. When he's disciplining us, it is for our benefit. So if you are alive, you will enjoy all the blessings that the Lord has given unto you. Praise God. If you're wise, you will always stand out wherever the Lord has given you. That is, it is for your honor and it is for the glory of, it is for the glory of God. When you're walking and you're comfortable that you're a child of God, you are able to tap any blessing you want from the Father. Praise the Lord. And a child that is disciplined, it is practical. See A child that is disciplined, when they come to the parent and a child who is in discipline, immediately as they come, you'll just see the way the face behaves. If it is that child who is troublesome, when they appear, you are just imagining every time he appears, it is just trouble. You, you have already changed your face. Even if you are laughing, you have already become serious. Ninini, what is it? Because you're just thinking it is trouble and trouble and trouble. When a disciplined child is coming, akipita tu, ebu, just come. Unamuita kwa upole. Vizuri kabisa, unasikia anataka nini. Lakini mtoto mtukutu, unaona tu utukutu. Akitembea ni utukutu, kila kitu ni utukutu. We don't want to appear like that in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. Why are you laughing? But that is the truth. So if the Bible compares the standards of God, with what us as earthly parents are doing. If your child appears to you and is, is disciplined and you are receptive and you are warm and you are ready to bless and you are ready to listen and you are ready to give and the other one who's troublesome when they come you are already seeing trouble. Hata uraanza kutafuta kiboko yuko wapi kwa sababu unajua it could, you know there's something wrong. What of when we go to the father and you are walking in an upright way and when you are not walking in an upright way Praise God. But the Father's love is different from our love. He will punish you, but He will punish you with love. Praise God. And I pray that as we want to be transformed, we have been reflecting. Tunataka mungu tutende maku. Tunataka maisha yetu ya badilike. Kuwa tayari kupokea. Inaitha waje kwa The discipline of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Be willing. Be ready to be disciplined by God. Be ready to be taught. Be ready to be rebuked. Be ready to be punished. Praise the Lord. And be corrected. So that at the end of everything, the will of God for your life will be fulfilled. Praise the Lord. Ninaombea kwamba Mungu ataweza kufanya kile ambacho anafaa kufanya kwa maisha yenu. Na msikue na machungu. Do not be angry. Si tulikuwa tunakasirika wazazi wa kitu chapa. Unakasirika siku ngapi? Unakasirika siku ngapi? And you're still entering that house. You need to eat. You need to sleep. So unakasirika madakika ngapi? So if, you, if you're that kind of person who's angry at God. Oh, I wanted, I, I wanted a child you have not given me up to this time. <laughs> anyway, it is nitakuonea tu ruma. If we will never get angry at our parents to that level, why would you want to get angry at God to that level? Or because you cannot see him? Or is it because we cannot see him? Somebody was telling me, I have prayed for my parents to get well and they have died. God does not exist. And I'm like, hmm. As kumoja mama yako alikuchapa wiki moja huko unatembe, mpaka alikuwa na fracture, ukae kwa plaster. And you are still calling them mom. You're still calling them dad. You have not, ujakasirika, uhame, uzeme now you stop being my parent. That is being foolish. It is, it is okay to feel the pain. It is okay to feel the disappointment. But let the Lord do what he wants to do in your life. Buona feel. Some of us get angry for, at God for, for things that do not make sense. Surrender that pain back to him. Let him fashion it and give you the beauty for the ashes that you're going through. Praise God. Let us stand up in prayer.